engine cooling part 2 on the boat 80. In this video we finish building the pump and then take a good look at how the raw water cools your engine and give you a few more top tips. So here's our pump with our nut locked tight on it, all nice and tight. Nice piece of rag around this so that you're using the, the vice to clamp it through the rag and you're not going to damage these teeth on this gear. Now here's the next thing. We're going to put this impeller in from the kit. If you don't use plenty of glycerine, then it will drag across there until the water gets up inside. So what I do, what I do is I put plenty of glycerine around inside there at the back of the pump and lots on that lobe that's going to be located on there and then simply fold that in hold the lobe and push down why is that there we go Okay, now what you need to do is to make sure you've got plenty of glycerine inside the lobes where that cam is. Now in order to make sure that that's all the way around the pump you need to take a small paintbrush and just paint it around the inside of the pump and on the lobes of the impeller. Okay, so just take that glycerine around the inside on the ends of the lobes make sure it's around the cam and of course on the end there as well and that will ensure that as this impeller turns it's not going to dry and bind on the inside of the pump and then the last thing to do is just to wipe this off of the brass. Take our gasket. Like so. And then line the holes in the gasket, the holes in the face plate, and just put a couple of bolts in to hold it in position. And just do them up finger tight. Don't need any more than that at the moment. Okay, when all six of those are in, you can then take your screwdriver and just tighten them up. Just past finger tight again. And notice how I've done that one first. Now I'm going diagonally across from it. And then that one. And then that one. And so on until all of them are just pinched tight. Okay, so all of these are now just pinched tight um, and this plate has been pulled down evenly, much like you would a cylinder head. And now all I'm going to do is, is go around them all again and just pinch up the last bit, working diagonally or Diagon Alley, for those of you who are Harry Potter fans. And that is all you should need. You don't need 
to do them any tighter than that. Our pump is now rebuilt and the only thing left to do is just to spray our pump up. I'm going to mask it up here and here and spray it up in Volvo Green so that it looks new and refurbished and the way it should do. So there we are, our pump's all complete now. These bits were masked up so that we uh, don't get paint on those. And it's had three coats of paint, a little bit of overspray on the gear wheel. And the last thing to do is just to put some oil around this gear before we put it back in so that uh, the teeth aren't driving dry when it goes in. So let's, uh, let's go to the engine bay. So here's our engine bay and while we were here I've just cleaned round with some rag taken the alternator dust off where it's uh, where it's sat and checked our serpentine belt that's uh, that's fine just generally giving the engine a bit of a, a clean over I've cleaned the bilge out from that salt water we have our, our pump here and it's got a little drop of oil on the uh, gear wheel and the first thing we're going to do is to just locate a new o-ring in the opening there come on okay so that o-ring is now located in the right place put our pump in there very carefully just turn give it a slight turn so that it meshes with the gear Check that o ring still there and okay. There we go. I just loosely fit the first bolt. And then the one diagonally opposite. And the bottom one. There we go. And then the last one. You can hear my Italian colleagues having a bit of a chat outside. For some reason, they always seem to shout. Always shout. Okay. I've just for speed. I'm going to use the socket and I'll just pin it in and the other one that I can get to yeah. and what I could really do with it is a wobble socket to get on there a wobble extension just pinch that home So I'll just nip these up now with a spanner. And one opposite. And reconnect our hoses. top one just take a bit of care to make sure that these are actually seated properly and you're going to get a good seal so there we are all done pumps back on it's in the correct orientation I will get a small paintbrush and just do the heads of these bolts and that may seem a bit OCD that will stop them rusting out and uh, keep our engine bay nice and tidy and clean. So the next thing we've got to do is just to prime the water system. So we'll turn the seacock to the drive leg off, fill the hopper for the um, raw water strainer up, and that will fill this hose with water up to the pump, and then we'll put the lid back on, open the seacock and start the engine. Okay. 
I'll just give this a final check round. Belts are okay, no worn hoses. Okay, we'll open up the seacock. And then I shall go and start the engine. There we are, running away. No leaks, that's good. Lots of water coming out there, and lots of growth on our boat again. But yeah, that's all working fine. So that's the pump all done. I just wanted to go through the water path through the engine, how it goes up through the drive leg, etc. So there's these three holes on the sides of the drive leg, but the water path is actually vertical, and there's a clearance hole in the very bottom of the drive leg that gives you a rod in place, you know, to clean out anything that's in there. Unfortunately, these uh, drive legs have an Achilles heel right at the top of the drive leg, just before the seacock. There's a corner, and that corner allows stuff to get caught before the seacock. So things like weed quite often get jammed in there. Now here's a top tip. In order to clear it out, you can simply connect your dinghy inflation hose from the pump straight to this line and literally blow it out or do the same with a hose pipe, clearing anything in the line. And of course, you can do that while the hose is still connected to the seacock. If you don't have a sail drive and you have a conventional seacock, well, they have an Achilles heel as well. You see, the water flows over the outside of the boat and there's a venturi effect, so the pump actually has to work harder to draw the water in. Again, if they get blocked, you can simply push compressed air from a pump down there or from a hose and blow it out. So if you've got this type of through hull and seacock, here's a top tip. We'd recommend next time you're out you change your through hull to this type. It has a gated entry and actually helps scoop the water up the pipe. These are much more efficient and of course not so prone to blocking. They're really good especially if that through hull is feeding your water maker and you're wanting to make water while you're moving along much more efficient. Okay, so we've talked about the through holes and the seacock. The next thing on the list is the water strainer or seawater filter. Now most of these are above the level of water outside, but some of them can be below it. It goes without saying you need to check that your seacock is closed before you open it. So seawater strainers come in many different guises and many different types. Plastic, brass, bronze, stainless steel. I strongly advise you to familiarise yourself with it and how it works and how to change the filter. Okay, we've done the raw water pump to death now. We've done a couple of videos, but we wanted to show you in detail how they work and how to repair them. But the next thing to look at is your anti siphon valve. This valve is absolutely critical. If it fails or doesn't work, then you can have a lot of water inside your engine, yes, inside your engine, before you know it. In some engines, this siphon brake has a telltale hose coming out the top, and water can be seen coming out of it in a prominent position, like in the cockpit or over the transom. So why is the anti-siphon valve or siphon brake so important? Well, I'll tell you. Without it, water can actually flow or siphon into your exhaust elbow, when the exhaust fills up with water, it can then flow back through the exhaust manifold and into the engine via an open valve. When you start your engine, you can't compress a liquid, and this is called going hydraulic. You could blow the head off the engine or break a conrod. Some of the salt water might even get down the sides of the piston bores and into your oil. And this could cause your engine to prematurely seize or partially seize. So keep an eye open. There are two telltale signs. One is your dipstick. If the oil level is getting higher, then something is replacing the oil. 
The second is the oil filler cap. Look for white emulsified oil on it. Now we've done a video on heat exchangers, but this is where the salt water goes through the heat exchanger and cools the coolant in the engine. Any blockages in the heat exchanger will have a detrimental effect on the cooling of your engine. So keep them clean, clean them out on a regular basis. Check out our video on cleaning heat exchangers, there's a link in the description. After the raw water has been through the heat exchanger, it then gets injected into the exhaust elbow. Now this is another critical part. These elbows can become blocked, they can become jammed, carboned up, or the aperture into them becomes smaller. Again, we've done a video on this, there's a link in the description. Once the raw water has been mixed in the exhaust elbow, it then goes through a muffler or water lock. It comes out the other side and then goes to your exhaust pipe. And again, this can be a source of problems if you've got a Volvo type water lock. The water then leaves the muffler and goes out through the transom, but not before it's gone up and over a gooseneck. And it's this gooseneck that stops seawater or waves on your transom or on the side of your boat going back down the exhaust and filling the water lock with water. This gooseneck can be a component part or it can be part of the exhaust, but it must be there. So finally, if you see white steam coming out of your exhaust, it's highly likely that there's some kind of interruption in the flow of the raw water. And remember, steam dissipates in air, smoke doesn't. That's how you tell it's steam. We hope this video has been useful to you, and if it has, remember to like and subscribe, or even become one of the Patreon crew. For just a few pounds a month, or dollars a month, you can help support the making of these videos, and helping other people out too. Thanks for watching, and sail safe.